Hello everyone, Om Shanti. I am back again in this session to discuss about a special quality which seems to have been lost in the buzz of 21st century. Yes, this is the quality of silence. This age accepts rush, that too, in the celebratory gesture. People are actually full of mechanical murmurings in this world today. So, they experience lack of contentment and lack of peace. People have failed to stop and take stock of what they are actually doing and lost in the fast pace, in the hectic pace of their life. Now is the time to pause. The grinding gears, the grinding internal gears and reset your priorities and focus on what actually matters, what really matters. This message instantly resonates in the digital age where switching off has become a much needed life hack. Keeping quiet by Pablo Neruda might be one of the beautiful poems ever written. It is so soulful that it seems to come from straight from the heart of the poet. It is in fact a gentle reminder to drop from excessive mechanical tick-tock. Actually, the impulse of creating something, the impulse to create in fact begins in a tunnel of silence. Experience its depth, experience its music, experience a sense of brotherhood. The poem, Keeping Quiet, is not an activist's call to action, but it's a philosopher's call to introspection. Now, let's dive into the realm of silence and enjoy the explanation of the poem as per the poet's mindset. Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda. Before we listen to the recitation of the poem, let's have an overview. Keeping Quiet is a magnificent poem based on the profound Indian philosophy of quietude, self-introspection, universal peace and brotherhood. Man is responsible for the chaos and bloodshed on planet Earth, which have driven the human race to the brink of annihilation. The poem highlights the importance of introspection. This poem is written in a conversational style due to which the poet establishes an instant connection with the readers so the message is beautifully conveyed. Now listen to the recitation of the poem Keeping Quiet, composed by Pablo Neruda. Now we will count to twelve and we will all keep still. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment. Without rush, without engines, we would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales, and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, Victory with no survivors would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. 
Life is what it is about. I want no drug with death. If we were not so single-minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. Now let's understand the explanation of this poem. The poem begins with the line, now we will count to 12. It begins with an appeal to keep quiet and stay still at the count of 12 and the poet urges for a complete cessation of words and action. At the heart of this poem is inclusivity. The poet employs the collective we, we, v to begin the exercise of keeping quiet. The count till 12 may be interpreted as signifying the 12 hours mark of the clock from which the two hands circle in a monotonous manner very much like the daily activities of life. So, the poet says that there are only 12 signs on the clock to measure hours. Therefore, the poet asks us to count till the clock measures these hours. Too much activity and rush has only brought misfortunes to mankind. Hence, it is better to be quiet and still. So the poet wants us to create a feeling of mutual understanding among ourselves. Now in the next stanza, for once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language, let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. Here the poet appeals for a seizing of words and actions. Actually, he wants to say that the language brings differences. So he says to go beyond the domain of language to the realm of silence. He says the moving of arms not only harks back to the ceaseless movement of the hands of the clock, but also to the gesture of restlessness and aggression, which modern world is obsessed with. The people of the world have been indulging in wars and bloodsheds on minor excuses. If they keep quiet, they may not indulge in reasoning, disputes and quarrels. So, this is an appeal from the poem that you be quiet and not speak in any language. This will ensure peace and prosperity. So the expression the face of the earth refers to the various countries on the surface of the earth. We should seize all activities for a second. Man has used his arms only to kill and destroy others. Therefore, he is in fact says that stop unnecessary activities and please have quietude. Now, the next stranger which begins with the line, it would be an exotic moment. Here in this stranger, the poet says, one must remember that hectic pace of life is what makes silence an exotic one, an exotic, extraordinary moment. Like the clock, our lives have become utterly mechanical, dominated by rush and engine, means frequent traveling.
So a moment of silence will not only be delightful but also a rare moment. Exotic moment is a rare moment because silence has become rare in the world. Therefore, it's a powerful way of escaping the mechanistic motion of the modern life. There will be peace all around if there is no rush or the sound of the running of engines and machines. It will be really very interesting moment, a very beautiful moment. All of us will enjoy the unusualness and sudden strangeness of that moment. Let's proceed ahead with the line fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Actually here, the theme of environmental conservation and social justice is strongly felt. Man's greed not only leads to the exploitation of other creatures, but of fellow human beings who are oppressed by the unjust economic system. So he says that the sufferings of both the workers in the salt mines and the sea creatures in the ocean would end for a moment if only everybody kept silent. The fisherman symbolizes man's indiscriminate exploitation of nature for his vested interests. The whales will no longer on the verge of extinction. A sense of coexistence can go into the minds of people. The man gathering salt has injured his hands. So he must take care of his hurt hands and should realize that his actions are self-destructive. He creates here the image of incessant sufferings. In his effort to add comforts to his life, he has paid no heed to the pain that caused him. The human beings have paid no heed of the actions, no heed to the pain that was caused due to his own action. Now proceed ahead with the next stranger. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire. Here, these lines highlight the devastating consequences of war. Neruda, in fact, had witnessed the atrocities committed during the Spanish Civil War under the regime of dictator General Franco. He had seen, in fact, the war in close quarters and very well knew the consequences of the victory with no survivors because his own friend Lorca was assassinated. So he says that if only we keep quiet, it will be possible to walk hand in hand with the brothers in the shade of peace. And he says also green wars, wars with poisonous gases and wars with the fire are different kinds of wars here. It will be a victory where no survivors will be left to celebrate it. Such a victory will be meaningless, useless. Nobody will be there along with you to enjoy. So, how should the lovers of war behave? The question is here. So it is suggested by the poet that they should put on clean clothes and walk with their brothers under the trees, leisurely doing nothing. Now let's go ahead with the line, what I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with that. The poet makes it clear that what he has been advocating should not be confused with total inactivity. It doesn't mean death. 
in fact he wants to say here total inactivity means a higher level of existence self introspection meditation okay so the poet is advocating for silence or stillness stillness should not be confused with total inactivity total inactivity brings death but then the poet refuses to associate with death thus he is not advocating for death next line if we were not single minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death people pursue single mindedly on keeping their lives moving so the poet suggests that it would be better if they give themselves rest for some time for once they may do nothing a huge silence can do us a lot of good when we are disappointed at not understanding ourselves for threatening ourselves with death this is the most insightful lines in the poem where the stark reality of modern life is highlighted tragedy of modern life is highlighted let's come to the last few lines perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive now i'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go the poet wants to prove that there can be life under apparent stillness so the poet invokes the earth as a living symbol to prove this point the earth never attains total inactivity nature remains at work all the time even under apparent stillness it keeps earth alive so this idea is beautifully illustrated by the following lines as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive only the earth remains alive when everything seems dead now the poet means here to achieve positive approach and thinking by counting up to 12 so at last he is saying now i'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go so what is the significance of keeping quiet here to bring peace and harmony to this uneasy and turbulent world and what does the poet mean to achieve by counting up to 12 here actually he wants to let us know that achieving positive approach was my thought just by counting up to 12 so i have taught you the lesson now it's up to you how are you going to keep quiet how are you going to soothe your mind i hope the explanation is clear to you in case of any doubt feel free to ask in the comment section thank you very much